y'all. It's Fang Pipsqueak Reads and <clears throat> long time no review. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I just, I had my summer vacation and I decided to just take it easy. Read a little bit, write a little bit and watch a shit lot of movies and TV shows. That's the best way. But I did finish like two books, I think. So I ha I'm i gonna do a one review, you know, just to start off, uh, just to kick off August, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully I can, get, I can get a lot more reading done in August, now that everything's back to normal again. Like, I've gone back to work and stuff, but yeah, doesn't matter. Anyway, so I finished The Unfortunate Elements of My Anatomy by Hayley Piper. So it's her um, short story collection, and uh, I definitely love the cover that was made here. It's published by the Seventh Terrace, and I think it's her. Um, I think it's her first short story collection. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I might be wrong, but I really enjoyed it. Like everything that Haley puts out, it's really good. So. I really, really enjoyed uh, reading her short story. Actually, I think I managed to finish it like within a day because I was so engrossed into her stories. There are there are a lot of them here, a lot of different kinds. So uh, if I'm just just gonna read from the blurb that is just here in the back. Love twisted into horrific shapes, nightmares driven by cruel music, and a world where that little light remains fractures the sky into midnight rainbows in 18 stories tracing the dark veins of queer horror, isolation, and the monstrous feminine. I love that. The universe unwinds to the tune of a malicious ice cream truck jingle and we all scream. The law of conservation of death dictates that a ghost pursue his prey across her every reincarnation. Superstitions thrive even in the distant future and across the stars when a colony shuttle mounts a witch trial and Harry Jack and try to forgive the adoring beast as it scavenges a world of dead gods for tokens of bloody affections. So yeah, it is uh, really, really good. And uh, I decided, uh, you know, just because this is a short story, it's really good to, you know, note, like, note stuff down. I'm trying to do like Kevin from Well Read Beard Beer does, but I don't like covering my books with post-it notes. So what I did instead is I ordered this book review notepad. It's designed by Cassie. Uh, I'll put the link uh, to her Etsy shop there. And it was really nice to have this handy here because I could, you know, put the title, the author, put the stars, and then just write what I felt was good, what was bad, and general notes and stuff and quotes. I'm bad with quotes, but doesn't matter. So this helped me keep, like, in check what I liked and what I didn't like about um, Haley's stories. But I didn't really not like anything. I mean, all the stories were solid. I mean, there were some that were, in my opinion, just my personal favorites. And there were some that kind of, you know, kept me going a lot more time than some of the other ones. Like, I mean, there are 18 stories here, but they are really, really good. The ones that I noted down as my personal favorites was um, Candyland was one. I can't remember which on which page it was. Um uh, page four seven, yep. And it's basically about this kind of like weird um creatures, like human like creatures who are who come to Earth or like to a specific place on Earth to select their brides. And I think it was was it her was it the can't remember who it was. Uh, if it was like her, their blood or something like that. It's just they like they would choose their brides, so called, based on how uh, if they like smelled or tasted like uh, candy. I think. I think that was it. I've 
I'm I'm not really bad, good with when it comes to remembering so I'm like here what was it again but yeah so it's a bit yeah so as it says here on page 49, it says, One could start eating his princess at any moment, but chose to savor her presence the way he would later savor her taste. So yeah, they would basically kind of eat them. And in this story, it's considered like a really good thing to be chosen because then the family would like be sustained like for life so it was both a huge honor for the girl to be chosen and to be eaten by those kin uh, by those creatures and then it was also a huge honor and a good benefit for the families it's like they kind of it's like the creatures like kind of knew that what we we're doing was wrong but decided to like we'll compensate you for your daughter instead which is horrifying kind of like it's almost like you know human trafficking in a way and so it focuses on the story on the girl, uh, one of the girl who's desperately trying to, you know, become a princess, and she's so so frustrated that she can't uh, says that she's not chosen. But then suddenly, one of the prince that hasn't chosen a princess arrives at her high school, and she, you know, gets the hopes up that he'll choose her. But for some reason, he chose one of her best friends, the one girl who doesn't like this um, this kind of connection or you know situation with with those princes so she wasn't really happy about it and uh, well, then she comes back home and she you know wallows in self-pity and you know woe is me I wasn't chosen stuff like that and her friend comes over to her and asks her to hide her because she doesn't want this she doesn't she just she doesn't want to be eaten and you know, you kind of you kind of would have expected that the friend they would have they would help each other, but the girl being so like driven by jealousy and basically I think leading later on like to hatred, she just like no, and then leads the prince back to her and like you should be eaten. It's your destiny. <laughs> it was it's kind of harrowing. Once I was reading it, but I and that's the thing. I really enjoyed that. Uh, what, the other story, uh, one other story that I liked uh, was um, "Demons of Particular Taste." I really, I really liked that one. Um, it was kind of like a reverse exorcism. I think you, I think you can, you can really just describe it like that. I can't, I, because it's a short story, it's kind of like a flat flash fiction, I won't go much into the details, but the ending was kind of funny, and I, I laughed at that one. Uh, I also like, uh, I'm not a chainsaw kind of girl, but it's called, and it's kind of like an homage to uh, like the slashers and the evil dead, in which uh, a pianist decides to conjure up two demons in order for them to sever the relationship of her best friends and their like boyfriends so basically this pianist hates her friends boyfriends and she knows that they don't they don't particularly like each other and so she summons up demons to be like yeah you do the thing just get rid of them i don't care how you do it and you know in classic you know evil dead nature it all goes to hell and i really loved the description she put in there how she manages to put up chainsaw there and how the pianist ends up you know using it against the demons and then how it turns into this kind of like a cosmic horror element right at the end it was really good i i really enjoyed that one and um <laughs> then there is like i mentioned in the um in the blurb here um we all scream was also another story that I really enjoyed, but it made me question my taste for ice cream. It just, you know, I love, I'm an Icelander and we get ice cream at, at any time of the day. Like even though there's a blizzard outside, the weather is so much crap, we will still venture outside, brave the fucking blizzard to get an ice cream. So, her descriptions 
Haley's descriptions of of this ice cream guy, like the ice cream man who was, you know, delivering ice cream, was so unnerving and just so gross. <laughs> I don't think I ate ice cream for like a week. <laughs> it was like, I can't really go into the details. Well, maybe, well, maybe I can. I mean, if you if you do like me reading out of it, uh, one hundred and thirty nine was the tale. And it's basically about this um, who is a person who is in the, in the middle of transitioning, and she is having trouble to choose whether which um, whether she's go to the boys' men's room or the girls' men's, men's uh, or the girls' room, like at a, at a mall. And this ice cream man just comes and kind of terrorizes her for you know trying to choose in the most really, 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 really gross and creepy way like here um his voyeuristic glee made eating ice cream feel dirty as licking the tile floor it's like yeah that's basically how i felt and um what also was yeah here also Ice cream spilled up her throat, giving truth to the ice cream man's threat. Something about the mix of acid and cold suggested people shouldn't be eating this stuff in the first place. Would it always be like that? So, yeah. It's, uh, it, it got creepy, but I think that's why I enjoyed it. Because it was so creepy and gross. Because it was different from the, all the other stories that she uh, that she wrote in the, in the short story collection. It wasn't really... How should I say? Um refined maybe i don't know it just i don't know i i liked it because i think it was i felt it was you know gross and yeah ice cream who doesn't like ice cream we all scream for ice cream but <laughs> yeah um but basically the best story out of this um out of this sort of collection was the last one and it's called recitation of the first feeding and it blew my mind away. It was so good. And she told it in such a little, it was just, it was literary prose of the finest degree. She, she told it so brilliantly and so subtly, you know, you, like the, it wasn't really, you know, shoved into you, the information. It just, you, you picked at it. Almost like, you know, almost like an hors d'oeuvre. You were just eating bits of it from, you know, as you went on in the story. And the more pieces you got, the more comprehensive and how everything kind of fell into place with it. So without giving much to, you know, spoiling you guys, because <clears throat> I did that for some of the, my reviews. Um, so basically it's about this boy who has been haunted, had haunted by a ghost girl. And he basically really just wants to get rid of her. So what he does is he goes to his grandma, who has these weird stories about uh, called the col uh, about stories about a group of people called the culinary court. court. And uh, one person described them as kind of like these Cenobite characters, and I thought that description of those people was spot on. Like, immediately, how Kaylee uh, described those creatures. It's just immediate, yeah. I, I, I could envision them being in, like, dressed in those similar clothes that the Xenobites from Hellraiser are. So, like, to give you a you know, to give you an example. Um, my heart sank when I laid eyes on the nightmarish glutton. A white segmented creature, like a worm and a maggot mixed together, whose face was thorny teeth and whose six sapphire eyes shined from each side of its serpentine head. Wet fingerless, fingerless limbs held it down the grass. I doubted it had any useful utensils. Um, and then, bon and then kind of, it's like a French kind of, kind of worm, like bonjour, it says. And, um, the connoisseur crept next from the carriage doorway. Unlike the first two, he clothed himself in a pale violet, double-layered jacket, its white frills puffing from the chest and sleeves. 
His slender pants rolled down to his knees were white socks tucked up underneath. Black shoes crunched the dry grass, their silver buckles the gleam. He was pale as the, as the horses, blue veins drawing faint maps beneath his skin, and a white curling wig crowned his head. His tiny mouth was sewn shut, the flesh around the thread scarred white. He treaded down the slope, bowed to me, and stood to one side. His violet gaze never left me. So, yeah, so there are these kind of, like, this culinary court, and they basically eat anything. So you, as the person who would, you know, call them, call them forth, you would have to present a feast for them. And it didn't matter what kind, they, you would just have to present it and they would eat it, like literally eat everything. And um, the boy asked the, asked the court to, you know, eat the, uh, eat the ghost girl. And then for us, like for um, a dessert, basically, it w he said that he, uh, they, he would offer them uh, his memories of this feeding. And uh, they do that. And how she wrote it, just, it was really, really, really good. And she managed to like create it into this kind of lavish feast like the descriptions and how you know the memories were presented like um like an elaborate dish and how like they were like critiquing it like a like a food critic and i was just yeah i was blown away by it but then in the end the boy feels like as he grows up he doesn't he, of course he doesn't remember what what happened but you know as he grows up he becomes he feels like he's really empty and he doesn't know why and uh, so he decides to go back and meet with the culinary court again to demand answers. And that's basically the reason why it's called the, rec uh, the, rec the recitation of the first feeding. I'm not going to say anything else. I just I highly encourage you to read, uh, to read the entirety of Haley Piper's collection. But I would strongly recommend to read the last story because the last story was phenomenal just it you know, like i said it blew my mind away it was so good so i give haley's collection i give it a four out of five stars the reason why i didn't give it more like like i said because this is a short story collection and there were some stories that i didn't like as much as the others but the real reason why i just really wanted more so i I really hope Haley will do more short stories because I love her books and I I hope you guys will love it too. So, yeah. First review in August. Yay! Uh hopefully I'll get more done. But uh if you want if you want to like listen to um some of uh, like some other short stories or novellas that I've been doing. I haven't really done them uh, like as review here because I'm actually discussing it with my uh, co-hosts in my uh, in the uh, podcast Staring into the Abyss. So every uh, every week we pick a short story or a novella usually or, or or a novel if we get the time. We sit down, we read it, and then we come together and we discuss it basically tell what we think thought about it and everything so if you like that and if you want to get more of my you know thoughts on some of the stories you can check that out as well uh, I'm also you know on Twitter so if you want to catch up you know talk chat with me on there you can find me there I'll put the put the Twitter handler handle on my uh, in, in the caption but yeah I think I think I'm okay I'm a little bit tired of the work you know getting back from vacation so i'm just gonna let that slide today <laughs> but i hope i'll see you guys next time see ya <laughs>